Murder and Mr. Malone. Get me the office of John J. Malone. Murder and Mr. Malone. You've read about John J. Malone in Craig Rice's best-selling mystery novel. You've seen him in her hit motion pictures. Now, for the first time, you can enjoy his bring you the adventures of fiction's most famous criminal lawyer... In Murder and Mr. Malone. Malone is the name. John J. Malone, attorney and counselor at law. They say one of the qualifications of a good lawyer is a sense of humor. I wouldn't know about that. For example, I never could appreciate the humor of a certain Mr. Charles Morgan. Morgan was a big-time gambler in Chicago whose practical jokes I found a little too strong for my taste. And on this Saturday afternoon, Morgan and a beautiful blonde model named Linda Stevens were planning one of his best in a car parked in front of the Club 86 on Chicago South Side. Now, you understand what you're supposed to do, Linda? I'm not too sure, Mr. Morgan. Well, what's the matter with you anyway? Your agent told me you were a hep dame. Look, Mr. Morgan, I don't need a job that day. Oh, I'm sorry, I... Linda. I didn't mean that. You see, I want to play a joke on this guy. I want to make sure it goes off the schedule. Well, the more I hear this joke, the less I like it. Well, I tell you, there's nothing to worry about. This fellow's a good friend of mine. Well, can I do something as silly as Just to settle a bet. He thinks he's a great little man with the ladies, and I bet him 50 bucks he was wrong. But, Mr. Morgan, you promised me 100 for this job. How can you possibly win? You don't understand. It's not the money. It's the principle of the thing. Just want to make a sucker out of David. David? Yeah, his name's Paul David. He's a thin little guy with red hair and pop eyes. You want to have any trouble spotting him. He owns the joint. He'll be in the corner booth. But uh, suppose your friend doesn't show any interest in me. You haven't taken a good look at yourself in the mirror lately, have you, baby? <laughs> I'm not at all worried. When David sees you, we'll start baying at the moon. But at the beginning, you want me to ask him something. Right. That's so he shouldn't become suspicious. Then pour out and let him buy you a couple of drinks. And after that? Well, he'd probably want to take you out for the evening. You tell him first you have to make a stop at your apartment. I don't think I like that, Mr. Morgan. What's that or not like? Perfectly on the up and up. When you get to your place, I'll be waiting for you. And that's where you're going to tell Mr. Davis it's just a joke? Yeah. I can hardly wait to see him when he learns it's a game. Why, I'll bet he'll practically die laughing. You were going to call me Paul. I'm sorry. Paul, do you know a man named... A man named who? Forget it. (laughs) You know, I don't get you, Linda. When I first saw you in the club, I immediately said to myself, there's a dame with Claire. I was surprised when you gave me a double. Well, I... I don't often do things like that. It was an impulse, eh? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, I understand. I get them all the time. Huh? Where do we go now? Oh, it's this apartment right here. Oh, hey, hey, let me help you. No, it's all right, Tony. I can know. Well, come in. Uh, thanks. Hey. Nice layout you got here, Linda. <laughs> I uh, think I'm going to like this. I wouldn't bet on that, David. Uh, Morgan. Oh, then you do know each other. You dirty little double-crosser. Oh, no. He told me it was a joke. Well, the joke's over now, honey, so you can beat it. Now, see here, Mr. Morgan. I said beat it. If you're a smart girl, you keep your trap closed. Now, go on. Listen, Morgan. Shut up. I don't want any conversation with you, David. Just want my dough. 
What the? Oh, Welsh. You see, I'm kind of low, Morgan. I've been running in tough luck lately. Yeah, from now on, it's going to get worse. You know, all the boys are laughing at me for letting you hang me up. Man in my position can't afford that, Davis. Might give other people ideas. Uh, uh, look, Morgan, I suppose I pay you a little at a time. What do you call a little? I can give you a ten grand now and the balance to you. your hands down. I was just going to get my wallet. You got that dough on you? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, Latella. Oh, sure, sure. I, I was going to give it to you all the time. All right, Morgan. Get him up. Put away that gun, there. At your age. <laughs> well, Mr. Morgan, who's the joker now? I guess it's me. And you're not sitting. That's okay, Davis. I'll see you again. Now lay your odds. Next time you won't be this lucky. <laughs> Mr. Lyons, because you'll enjoy it. After Morgan goes to all that trouble, Davis pulls a gun on him and leaves him with his tongue hanging out. That's very amusing, Hudson. What happened after that? Oh, Morgan started looking for him again. What do you think will happen if he finds him this time? The same thing, Mr. Lyons. You don't believe Morgan will kill him? Eh, Morgan's all taught. You think so? I know so. I wouldn't last this long as a private dick if I wasn't a good judge of character. Take it from me, Mr. Lyons. It's all a bluff. That's too bad, Hudson. It would be worth a lot of money to me if it was. Oh? How much is, uh, is a lot of money? What's the difference? You're not interested. Try me. $2,500. <laughs> you're right, you're right. At that price, I'm not interested. It isn't worth more. Everybody knows that Morgan has threatened Davis. You're on absolutely no risk. Uh, what have you, uh, what have you got against Davis, anyway? That is none of your business. Either you want the job or you don't. Well, as long as you put it on that basis, Mr. Lyons, let me take it off. <laughs> of Murder and Mr. Malone. Well, as you probably guessed, Paul Davis never did complete that phone call. Thirty-five minutes later, he was on the slab in the morgue and the cops in Chicago were out looking for Charles Morgan. But apparently, they weren't looking in the right places, but when I came home that afternoon, I found my door unlocked. No sooner had I opened it than I was challenged with it. Mr. Malone? What the devil? Shut the door. Now listen, Morgan. Hold it. Just keep your hands right where they are. What are you doing here? I'm hot. I haven't you heard. That still doesn't answer my question. I don't see why not. I'm wanted for murder. You're the best lawyer in Chicago. Doesn't it add up? Not to my liking, Morgan. You better get somebody else. Listen, Malone. Maybe I haven't handled it right, but I didn't kill David. Now why don't you tell that to the police? You don't think for a minute they believe me. Suppose I told you that I don't either. Just listen, Malone. I know you don't like me, but give me credit for a little intelligence. I was going to knock off Davis, but I shoot my mouth off all over town. So? I'll tell you, I didn't kill him. And who did? I have no idea. Okay, Morgan, I'll see what I can do for you. But first, I want you to surrender to the cops. Oh, no. And it's no deal. Now, wait a minute, Malone. I can... I'll make you a proposition. I'm not interested. Oh, for peace, sake, give me a chance, will you? Thought a man is presumed innocent until he's found guilty. Do you lawyers just say that because it sounds good? Well, we have... I'm convinced with any luck you can clean this up in a couple of hours. 
you have them by then, I'll give myself up. What do you do in the meantime? Stay right here. Now, what's to prevent me from walking out and calling the police? Nothing. Oh, you, uh, just trust me, huh? That's right. Now, this is against my better judgment, Morgan. But you got yourself a lawyer. <laughs> This is Norma Davis. That's right. My name is John J. Malone. I'm sorry to bother you at a time like this, but I'd like to ask you some questions about your husband. I've told the police everything I know. I'm uh, working on a different angle. Come in. Thank you. Now, what is it you want to know? Have you any ideas who might have killed your husband? Yes. Charles Morgan. I mean besides Morgan. No. Paul didn't have an enemy in the world. Well, you know, that's not true, Mrs. Davis. Your husband wasn't exactly the most popular citizen in Chicago. How dare you say that to well, me? I won't met... have you talk that way about him. I'm tired of these insinuations. What do you know of the kind of man Paul was? I'm sorry. Oh, you're sorry. Go on, get out. Mrs. Davis, I don't want to Davis. hear any more about it. Leave me alone. Permit me to congratulate you, Norma. This was a marvelous performance. Thank you, Amy. You think I convinced Mr. Malone that I was a heartbroken widow? How could you help it when you practically convinced me? Come here, darling. Let me console you. Just a second. Yeah? I'm looking for a guy named Hutch. Well, look no further, Mr. Morgan. You hush. That's right. One of my friends told me you wanted to see me. He told you right. Care for a drink? Yeah, I could stand off. Yeah, help yourself. The bar's in the corner. Hey, pour me one while you're at it. Oh, uh -huh. You're in a bad spot, Morgan. You bring me up here to tell me that? Yeah. You see, I know who killed Paul Davis. What? Who has That one, mine? Yeah. How, uh, how you fix the cash? What do you mean? I got a lot of information to sell, and it's going to the highest bidder. You mean you can clear me? I'm not doing any more talking until I see the color of, uh, the color of your dough. How do I know you got merchandise? Oh, I'll give you a sample. Did you know that Davis's wife was two-time enough? But oh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's all you get for free. But uh, you can use that kind of stuff, can't you? Listen, Hudson, I want you to talk to Malone. Who? John Jay, he represents me. Are you kidding? No. You talk to him? Oh, sure. Oh, Biden, I can make a buck. Don't worry, I'll take care of you. Now, I'm going back to Malone's apartment. I want you to call him there in about 45 minutes. You tell him what you told me about Mrs. Davis. Oh, no good, no good. Get the dough up first. Now, look, Hudson, I only got a grand on me. I'll give you another four the next time I see you. Okay, Morgan. You got yourself a deal. Morgan? Morgan! Oh, great. Yes, sir? Vincent, this is Mr. Malone. There was a man waiting in my apartment. By any chance, never mind. Come in. I was just asking for you, Morgan. Where the devil have you been? Oh, that tells me a lot. I thought you agreed to stay right here. I know, but I had to see somebody. Oh. Suppose you tell me what you found out first. Well, not very much. Every lead I explored came back to you. Did you see Mrs. Davis? Yeah, just for a few minutes. What'd you think of her? She seemed all broken up over her husband's murder. Just kidding you, Malone. It makes you think so. Because I've been doing a little checking up on my own. She's been holding hands with some guy who wasn't her husband. Where did you get that from? Private Dick. Named Joe Hudson. Oh, that lame. I don't care what he is, Malone. He's got the evidence to clear me. Who did he say killed Davis? He wouldn't tell me. But I made a promise to talk to you. Should have called you any man. Morgan, I wouldn't trust that guy in a stack of Bibles. What did you give him? Yes. Yeah, a guy like Hudson doesn't talk for the free. What did you promise him? Five grand. Well, you better save your money. I tell you, you can clear me, Malone. Yeah, it's probably him now. Uh, hello. Hello. That you, Malone? Yeah, that's right, Hudson. I take it that you talked to Morgan. Yeah. 
What I think is unimportant. Morgan tells me you can clear him. Sure. For a price. Oh, well, I'm not interested. And you got to talk to him. I don't like it, Morgan. Neither do I, but this guy can think. Well, make up your mind, boys. Okay, Hudson. We'll be over in an hour. <laughs> Down the hall. No, no, here it is. I want you to let me handle Hudson Morgan and keep your mouth shut. You're the doctor. What's keeping? I don't know. Maybe one hour, huh? Oh, I doubt that. How can you tell? Take a peek at that keyhole. Can't see a thing? Yeah, because the key's still in the lock. That means Hudson's got to be in there. Hey, Hudson, open up. Hudson! All right, Morgan, give me a hand. What are you going to do? Break it down. Shouldn't take too much effort either. Let's go. One more should do it. Steve! Hudson! Hudson! Where the devil is that light switch? Oh, he's somewhere around the door. Watch yourself, Morgan. Wait till I strike a match. I got it. There we are. Come on! Ah, yeah. Is he dead? He's either that or asleep. And with that knife in his back, what do you think? You are listening to Murder and Mr. Malone. And now back to the presentation of Murder and Mr. Malone. Twenty minutes after we found the body of Joe Hudson, Lieutenant McGraw of Cook County Homicide arrived. You should have seen his face light up when he spied Morgan. He acted like a man who was prospecting for silver and found gold. It was a nice piece of work, Malone, a very nice piece of work. All right, Morgan, let's go. Hold it, Lieutenant. He's not the reason I called you. No, I know, but I'm not complaining. Told you not to call him, Malone. I'm beginning to think you're right, Morgan. For the same nickel, I could have phoned somebody with brains. Now, what kind of a crack's that? Well, in case you haven't noticed, Lieutenant, there's a body lying on that sofa. Yeah, it'll keep. But as long as you raise the point, why did you kill him, Morgan? Are you crazy? You just got here with Malone. Don't no, hand me that. It's the truth, McGraw. So you're going to be his alibi. Yes, and you better listen unless you want to look like a jerk and go to trial. Oh, yeah. How long would you say Hudson was dead? Not too long. The body's still warm. Could have been anywhere from 15 minutes to three quarters of an hour. Well, that lets Morgan up. But I don't see how. Because he was with me every minute from the time I got Hudson's call to the time we broke down the door. The whole business took at least an hour. Your word's not good enough, Malone. Okay, if you don't believe me, you can check with the switchboard of my place in the dorm and downstairs. Yeah, I'll do that. If that's not enough, I'll dig up a hacker who drove us over. Now, that still doesn't mean Morgan couldn't have killed Davis. Oh, use your head, Lieutenant. You know both these murders were committed by the same party. Hudson knew who it was. That's why he was killed. I still say it was Morgan. Well, you're crazy. Hudson was going to clear me. Keep quiet, Morgan. All right, Lieutenant. I'll advise him to confess. If you can show me one thing. What's that? How did he get in here? You can see the only door was locked from the inside. So what? He could have used the window. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, take a look. There's a bar on it. That's right, and nobody but a midget could fit through the opening. Then there must be another door. Forget it, there isn't. Well, then it was a physical impossibility for anybody to have killed Hudson. Yet it was done. How? I can't tell you, but maybe I can take you to the little lady who can't. <laughs> All right, now listen, Malone. If the DA ever finds out I let Morgan go, he'll have money. Wait a minute. Isn't this the house where Paul Davis lived? That's right, Lieutenant. Well, you can't bother his wife now. Why not? Because her husband was just murdered. Oh. Well, she may surprise you with what she knows about it. Morgan told me she was being romanced by some character. Who's that? I don't know. Apparently, neither did Davis. You asked me, McGraw, I have a... Yes? Hello, Mrs. Davis. Remember me? Uh, not too pleasant. Well, maybe come in. I'm sorry, Mr. Malone. I'm busy. This gentleman would like to ask you a couple of questions. This gentleman means nothing in my own life. You never can tell. He's a lieutenant in the Cook County Police. Oh, Well, it's it, just that the house is in such a mess. Well, we uh, promise not to stare. Who else is Norma? Norma! I, uh, I think you're being paid, baby. It's, uh, it's nothing, Raymond. Uh, for a moment, darling, I was... Uh... Hello, Lyons. 
Malone. Lieutenant, I can explain everything. Sure you can, but suppose we do it downtown, huh? Downtown? It's customary, Mrs. Davis, when the police are questioning suspects. But we've done absolutely nothing. Nothing but murder your husband and a man named Joe Hudson. That's a lie. Do you deny that you and Lyons were busy in the romance department behind your husband's back? Yes. And what's Lyons doing here now? He's just helping me. Like he helped you murder Joe Hudson? No. Just a moment, Mr. Malone. I thought this gentleman was the officer of the law. Yeah, you're right, Lyons. But if you think my questions are going to be any less embarrassing, you're in for a bad shot. Joe Hudson was murdered at 1045 tonight. Now, where were you at that time? We saw him up here. That's right. Oh, now that's what I call a wonderful alibi, Lieutenant. Too bad there wasn't anyone else around to present you. Oh, but there was, Mr. Malone. A justice of the peace in Cicero. I think he may remember us. Why should he? Because I gave him $100 to perform the marriage ceremony that made Norma here Mrs. Lyon. <laughs> Doesn't make sense, McGraw. Hey, you watch where you're driving. I tell you, there's something screwy about that marriage. You saw the license. Doesn't it strike you as strange that within 12 hours after her husband is murdered, Mrs. Davis marries another man? Of course it does, but there's no law against it. As an attorney, you ought to know that better than anybody else. Yeah, but an alibi like that must have a hole in it. Yeah, will you show me where? And after you do that, show me how either Mrs. Davis or Lyons could have murdered Hudson. If it was a physical impossibility for Morgan to kill him, it applies to them, too. Hold everything. Oh, what a chump I think. Yeah, well, they say confession's good for the soul. I tell you, I got the answer to all of it, Lieutenant. On the level, Malone? Yeah, I know who killed Hudson. And with the help of Morgan, I'm going to prove it. I don't know what you're driving at, Malone. I don't know anything about Mrs. Davis except what I told you before. Well, how did you discover she was seeing lying? I didn't know it was lying. All Hudson told me was with some man. Uh, how well did you know Hudson? I met him for the first time today. He got in touch with one of my friends and said he wanted to see me. Oh, well, that uh, puts us right back there. So oh, look, why don't we drop the whole business, Malone? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? Sure. Pop, no, now I couldn't have killed Hudson. That's where you're wrong, Morgan. You mean it's still... No, no. But I do. What are you babbling about? I know how you managed it. Do you? Yeah, it was pretty clever. I can't blame myself for not seeing it sooner. No wonder you insisted I go and see Hudson. Still waiting to hear you explain how I killed him. I'm saving that to the cops. Don't kid yourself, Malone. You've done all the talking you know it. Oh, put away that gun, Morgan. You don't think I'd be fool enough to come up here alone? Funny, I don't see anybody around. You're not looking in the right place. What the... Get down, Malone. I'm warning you, Morgan. You better throw your gun in the middle of the road. You want it, Lieutenant? Come... Watch it, Maloney. Maybe after. Well, that hole in the forest, Lieutenant, it doesn't call for much ability. You can drop me off at the corner, Lieutenant. Well, it's, uh, Ben Graham. Hold it, Mr. Maloney. Maloney, if you're forgetting something, I got a report to make. Well, it's happened. You are. Well, you know that Morgan killed David. Oh, sure. I was the first one to say so. Yeah. You should have stuck to your gun. Well, when you talked in all that razzle-dazzle about Hudson's murder, you kind of threw me in. I don't feel too badly, Lieutenant. I was right with you. Of course, I'm reconstructing now, but this is what must have happened. Brian tried to hire Hudson to pump David. Hudson said he'd think it over. When Davis was killed, Hudson knew immediately that if he didn't do it, Morgan must have. Well, I don't see how that follows. It could have been Lyons. Oh, no. If Lyons were willing to do the job, why did he approach Hudson in the first place? Oh, no. It had to be Morgan. When Hudson realized that, he tried to shake down Morgan. He even told Morgan if the price were right, he might be induced to frame Davis' wife. So, Morgan played along with him. Asked him to get in touch with me. Mm-hmm. Now we're coming to the part I want to hear. Well, when Morgan went to meet Hudson, he knew it would be the first of many such meetings unless he took steps. So, he, uh, slipped the mickey into Hudson's drink. Now, uh... Why didn't he kill him then and there and be done with it, huh? Well, because he needed an alibi. And I was it. No, I don't get it. It's uh, pretty simple. He needed someone with him while he murdered Hudson. Why? Yeah. Remember you said it was a physical impossibility for anyone to get into that room and kill Hudson before Morgan and I broke down the door? Yeah, I remember. Well, you hit the nail right on the head. It was a physical impossibility. So that means Hudson was killed while I was in the room. All right. Now, let me get this straight, Malone. 
You mean while you were hunting for that light switch? Morgan was hunting for a place to plant his mic. Well, wasn't he taking quite a chance there? How? Hudson was drugged. He couldn't make an outcry. A knife doesn't make any noise at all. Yeah. Well, that'll learn you. Now, the next time I say something, you'll listen. I told you, Morgan, was a killer all along, didn't I? Yeah, well, you'll have to forgive me, Lieutenant. I, uh, I've been hearing so many radio shows, I forgot it wasn't unconstitutional for a cop to be right. <laughs> Let's hope this is time with some sort of a president. protection money. He believes in freedom of enterprise. He learned the hard way that murder is a bad business. I'll fill you in on the details next week. Why not pick me up at my office at the same time? I'll be waiting for you. Good night. Frank Lovejoy was starred as John J. Malone and appeared through the courtesy of Story Productions. Our program is directed by Bill Russo with music by Johnny Duffy. Murder and Mr. Malone is produced by Bernard L. Schubert. Now, this is Art Gilmore inviting you to tune in next week. The events and characters depicted in this story were entirely fictional. Any resemblance to actual places or people living or dead is entirely coincidental. Murder and Mr. Malone has come to you from Hollywood. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.